In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about operations on vectors. Suppose here we have a vector starting at the origin and goes to a point AB. Let's label that point P. Then we can express vector OP in component form as just A and B. What we want to talk about is how can you express a vector in terms of what's called its unit vectors. Your unit vectors for R2, again, we're in R2 here because we have here our x-axis and our y-axis. This is two dimensions, so we're in R2. Your unit vectors for R2 are expressed as I, stands for the unit vector having length 1 that starts at the origin and goes to the point 1, 0. Then we have vector J that again starts at the origin and goes up to the point 0, 1. These two unit vectors here, we can use to write vector OP as a combination of the I and J. To see this, notice we can take vector I and extend it by a scalar multiple of AI, and then we can take vector J and extend that as a scalar multiple of BJ. Now, taking this vector here, moving it over here, again, to remind you, vectors have no position. You can move them anywhere you want as long as you maintain the direction and magnitude. That is all right. So we're going to take that vector and move it over here. And by doing that, we have vector OP is equivalent to vector AI plus vector BJ. Therefore, any vector in R2 can be expressed as a linear combination of our standard basis vectors i and j. Let's look at an example. For the following example here, we want to write vector OP in terms of our standard basis vectors i and j. Now, in this situation here, we have the vector uh, that goes from the origin. So we're going to go from the origin here, label that with an O, and it goes to point P uh, located at 6, negative 3. Well, therefore... Uh, Vector OP, written in component form, is 6, negative 3, but written in terms of its standard basis vectors i and j will be 6i minus 3j. We can also write vectors in the opposite form. Given uh, vector OA written in terms of its uh, standard basis vectors here, let's say i and j, uh, we can write it back in component form. In this case here, you can take vector OA and written in component form, that would be 2, negative 3. Adding vectors in component form is very easy. Given two vectors from the origin, OA plus OB, let's say OA is AB in component form and OB is CD in component form. It's just a matter of adding them by their components. So in this case, the resultant vector of adding these two, OA plus OB, would be a plus c, b plus d. Likewise, uh, for any scalar k, if you want to multiply k by some vector op, it's just a matter of distributing that k to each component, ka, kb. So in this situation here, we have a vector oa written in component form as 3, 5, ob in component form as negative 2 and 3, and we want to simplify uh, this expression here. Well, this will end up being 2 times 3, 5, minus 3 times negative 2 and 3. Using scalar multiplication, we can now distribute that to each component, in which case this will be 6, 10, plus 6, negative 9. Now we're adding two vectors, and we can add them component-wise, in which case this becomes 12 and 1. So therefore, 2OA minus 3OB is equal to 12 and 1. Now the next question becomes is what if you want to express your vector off the origin? As we discussed, vectors have no position. They can be moved around anywhere. So what if you're working with a vector that does not start at the origin? To tackle this problem here, suppose we have a vector AB. The vector AB would go from here to here. Now, by definition of addition of vectors, I know this vector here would be vector OA. This is our origin. I know this vector here would be vector OB. And I know that by definition here, 
this vector here is going to be what? Well, this vector is going to be the vector such that OA plus this vector come out to be OB. The only way for that to happen is this would vector here would have to be OB minus vector OA. And notice here by adding these two vectors, OA plus OB minus OA, vector OA and OA will cancel, and you will get your resultant vector OB. So therefore, vector AB is just equal to OB minus OA. Let's look at an example. Let's say we have two points in our Cartesian plane A and B, and we want to create a vector between these two points. Furthermore, suppose we want the vector to start at point A, and we want it to go to point B. Notice here the arrow indicates the direction. So therefore, vector AB would be equal to OB minus OA, which in this case here, as we discussed, is going to be 3, 7, minus vector OA is going to be negative 3 and 4, in which case this becomes 3 minus negative 3, 7 minus 4, and this becomes 6, 3. So notice in general when constructing a vector of this nature, it's a matter of just taking 3 minus negative 3, 7 minus 4. We can also calculate the length of a vector uh, using components as well. So going back to our previous example here, suppose I have a vector a, which in this case is uh, x1, y1, and I have a vector b from the origin to the point b is x2, y2. As we discussed here, we know that this vector a, b is going to equal x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1 in component form. Well, vectors have no position, so we can move it back to the origin here. In which case, the length of this vector would then go from my origin to my point x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. And in which case, the length of this vector, we would have here a right angle. This would be the length of x2 minus x1 squared. This would be the length of y2 minus y1 squared. And therefore, the magnitude of AB will equal the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Let's take a look at an example. So for this example here, we have uh, the point 3, 5 and the point negative 2, 4. We want to construct a vector going between those points, going from point A to point B here. First of all, we know what vector AB will be. In this case here, we're going to have negative 2 minus 3 and 4 minus negative 5, in which case we get negative 5 and 9. So therefore, the length of vector AB will be the square root of negative 5 squared plus 9 squared, which is 25 plus 81, which is going to be the square root of 106. That concludes today's lesson on operations of vectors using components in R2. All of these properties, addition, scalar multiplication, magnitude, all translate exactly to R3 as well. Thank you.